Hi, I'm Chelsea Prendez and this is Body Shots. In this episode, we're taking a look back to a time when alcohol was illegal. That's right, today's episode is all about prohibition. We're going to kick it off at Rembrandt's, a bar that is forever tied to bootlegging and speakeasies. And don't forget about Dr. Lush. This week she has something that'll really put you in your seat. Then we're going to head over to the Whiskey Bar, where we'll be talking to a historian that will share his insights into the life and times during Prohibition. That and this week's trivia and another timeless drinking game. Prohibition. The speakeasy got its name during Prohibition because one had to whisper a code word or name through a slot in a locked door to get in. But here at Rembrandt's Dutch Pub, people gather together from all walks of life to drink a pint and enjoy a European atmosphere that's fun, casual, and knows no time. Dutch Pub with owner Ronnie Schmeich. Ronnie, thank you so much for having us. You're very welcome. I tell you what, I'm so excited to talk about your pub, but there's actual real history here in the building. Can you tell me how old this building is? Uh, this building was built as a brewery in 1890, so it's about 120 years old. So that's pre-prohibition. It is. And, yeah. But it has actually history of prohibition here in this particular it building, is. right? Yeah, it was built originally as a brewery, uh, still called the Dallas Brewery Building. Uh, because it's located on an artesian well. It had uh, natural water coming from the, I think it was connected through the Trinity River. Uh, then Prohibition came around and of course you know, they couldn't legally brew beer anymore so they, grew, uh, they brewed what they called grain juice. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime they were still brewing the beer and there were tunnels underneath the building running to the Trinity River which is now, now redirected, but they would brew the beer, haul it through the tunnels, and ship it up north. Well, along with the tunnels that go to the river, um, it actually led to speakeasies right underneath. Yeah, there was actually, uh, from what I found out, there was a speakeasy uh, in the basement on the other side of the building. It's, it was for a little while, it was called the Prohibition Room. They reenacted it uh, when this building was first turned into a commercial building again. And along with those speakeasies, of course, came gangsters and mobsters, yeah. etc. But the history of this building actually traces to a gangster. Uh, right around the time of Prohibition, mm -hmm. this building was purchased by a brewing company from Chicago, mm -hmm. the city of Al Capone. Right. And uh, one of the uh, board directors of the brew uh, company in Chicago mm -hmm. was actually was finan financial advisor for El Capone. Well, this place seems like so much more than a pub. And after Prohibition, Franklin D. Roosevelt said, what America needs now is a drink. So let's go have a drink with Jamie Lynn and Tana. This creation became one of the defining cocktails of the Prohibition era. It's called the sidecar and was probably invented around the end of World War I. So it's an oldie. First you'll need a shaker filled with ice. Then let's add our ingredients. Add two ounces of cognac. Next, add three quarters of an ounce of Contro. And last, add a half an ounce of lemon juice. Okay, it's time to shake it up. <laughs> you shake and I'll watch. <laughs> and now, what you've all been waiting for. Strain everything into your favorite cocktail glass. We're back here at Rembrandt's Dutch Pub and I have a very special treat for you guys. I'm sitting here with Jana Utterly and Taylor Stewart of the Velvet Kittens Burlesque Group. Hello ladies. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us. You guys are so sexy. Tell me how you got into burlesque dancing. 
Well, we've been involved in dance our whole lives, and burlesque, mm -hmm. which is a different style of movement. Right. Well, Taylor, tell me, for those of us that don't know much about burlesque, explain that to, to us. I think burlesque is a lot about just women's sexuality and being able to just empower that by using our technical skills and our training in dance and it's just it's a lot of fun and it's an entertainment and it's a it's an out it's an outlet for stage performance for me so that's really why I love it. Explain the type of movement that you guys use in your dances. Well, we change our themes a lot, mm -hmm. but um, ultimately there's a lot of hip isolations, shoulder rolls, and you also incorporating, you know, an angle of your chin and mm -hmm. nice. different things like that. Well, if a girl wants to get into burlesque dancing, but they don't know how to, do you guys teach classes? We offer classes, we offer choreography, private lessons, and they can find all the information on our website. Well, we still have that special treat coming up, so you guys stick around because the Velvet Kittens are going to do a little sexy dance for you. Hello class, Dr. Lush here. I've noticed that my usually proud and loud jocks have been feeling a little down in the dumps lately. I know that some of you have been warming the bench a little longer than Coach promised, and your little egos and tushies are sore. And believe me, I know how it feels to have a sore tushy. Dr. Lush. Well, boys, have I got a product for you. Papa Bird's Sip and Seat can hold up to three cups of liquid and up to 300 pounds of ass, all under a comfortable and durable pad. And it's available in a ton of pretty colors. So whether you're a crappy kicker or a terrible tackler, you won't mind missing another second of the action. I hear that your hot girlfriend is finally coming to one of your games, but you failed to mention to her that you're still warming the bench. Well, Use a Papa Bird sip and seat, and drink while you think about how you'll convince her that you're still her number one jock. I just love a big jock. So class, just because you've been riding the pine doesn't mean you can't have a good time. Get the Papa Bird sip and seat and turn that frown upside down. And that's a score in my playbook. Now, anybody up for a little one-on-one? -on -one? Mm. Touchdown. Well, there's the bell class. Till next time, have fun, be safe, and drink up. Thanks, Dr. Lush. I'm absolutely positive they would have allowed you during Prohibition. And did you know that because no one liked the taste of bootleg liquor, people started adding juice, soda water, and soda to their liquor, hence the invention of the cocktail. These were illegal saloons set up for people who couldn't resist alcohol. Up next, Jamie Lynn and Tana are serving us up something irresistible with bartender Ronnie. Back in the 20s, New York's colony was no ordinary speakeasy. It was where the Vanderbilts and the Windsors came to dine in a civilized manner. And if that included a drink or two, the bartender provided no questions asked. Our first prohibition drink is the colony cocktail. All right, show us what you got, Ronnie. All right, this one's called the Colony Cocktail. We'll start with some uh, London dry gin, about an ounce and a half. And we're gonna add some grapefruit juice, add a little bit of maraschino cherry juice, and we'll shake it up. Pour it over ice. Garnish it off with a cherry. Ooh, there you go. Thank you. 
Wow, that looks so good. Yes, absolutely. All right, this next drink was named after a hard-hitting World War I artillery piece. And as far as we know, it's the only cocktail that was invented in the United States during Prohibition. That's a classic. It's called the, uh, the French 75. Once again, we're gonna start off a little bit of dry gin. About an ounce and a half. About a half an ounce of freshly squeezed orange juice. Dash of simple syrup. Shake it up. Pour it over ice. And we'll top this one off with some French champagne. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. Garnish it with a lemon. There you go. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks Ronnie. Ronnie. You're welcome. This drink was very popular during Prohibition. And it's in honor of a beautiful blonde Oscar-winning star during the silent movie era. And she was a monumental figure at the dawn of the Hollywood scene. First, pour two ounces of white rum into a shaker filled with ice. Then add two ounces of pineapple juice. And last, one ounce of grenadine. And then, once again, shake all your ingredients up. Okay, then strain all your ingredients into your favorite glass. Then garnish with a cherry and a little cherry juice. Here's to you, Mary Pickford! During Prohibition, you entered a speakeasy through a hidden door, back door, or even a tunnel. This is the back door to the whiskey bar, where we're going to mix it up with some bare arms and legs, throw in booze with this week's drinking game, and of course, Prohibition trivia. Don't go anywhere. I'm so excited because sitting here with me right now is historian Jonathan Davis. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Now, there's so many things that I am excited about learning about Prohibition. Tell me a little bit about the speakeasies in Dallas. They were in the big cities, they were in the small towns, they were in the countryside. Any, anywhere people gathered together, anywhere people traveled, they were in roadhouses, they were in honky-tonks, they were anywhere. Since alcohol was prohibited, how did they get the liquor into these speakeasies? Well, they would bring them in very un underhandedly. <laughs> bring them in through the back, disguised as some other product in wooden boxes, in big barrels for the saloons. They would disguise them in tankers. They would use any way that didn't look obvious. Since it was prohibited everywhere, where were they doing this? Well, neighborhoods had their own stills. They had their own bootleggers. Uh, the good stuff was brought in from Cuba and Jamaica and brought up from the Gulf Coast. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan, for sharing some history with us. Thank you. And up next, we have Mixing It Up in Trivia with Jamie Lynn and Tana and this week's drinking game. over 30,000 speakeasies during Prohibition. Yep, and even public leaders drank there and flaunted their disregard for the law. And these two drinks were popular during Prohibition. This first one is a Barbary Coast, and as you know, Prohibition was a tough time. 
And I can only imagine that desperation could cause someone to mix scotch and gin. But as desperate as a time as Prohibition was, surprisingly, this drink's not bad at all. Corinne, will you show us how to make your Barbary Coast? Okay, ladies, first of all, fill a cup of ice. Then I'm gonna get equal parts of gin and scotch. Then equal parts of cream to cocoa and heavy cream. Shake it up. Strain it. Oh, nice. There you go. Good job. Wow, scotch and gin. I wasn't buying it, but it looks good. This next one is a simple classic, the Whiskey Sour, and it was popular between men and women during Prohibition. All right, Corinne, show us your Whiskey Sour. All right, the best way to do it is get a highball glass, fill it with ice, pick your favorite whiskey, sweet and sour mix, and you're set. <laughs> Down with Prohibition! Hi, I'm Sharon Solara, and we're here at the Whiskey Bar, which is an amazing place reminiscent of the secret underground speakeasies of the Prohibition era, where stylish gangsters and dolled up dames would gather and drink and play a forbidden game of suits. Suits is a card game played with four people. All you need is a deck of cards, a dealer to get things rolling, and don't forget the most important thing, drinks. The cards are given time values as follows. Ace is 15 seconds, kings, queens, and jacks are 10 seconds, and the rest of the cards, two to 10, are given their face value. The dealer must call out a suit, then he or she starts dealing out the cards face up to each player until someone gets that suit. Whoever gets the suit called by the dealer must drink the number of seconds the card represents and quickly call out another suit immediately after. If they forget to do this, they must drink again for the number of seconds they drank before. This game may seem to be all about luck, but as they said during Prohibition, you've got to be on the up and up if you want a chance to win. Let's talk to our players and see what tips and strategy they can share with us. I'm here with Bethany, who's a regular at these underground speakeasies. Bethany, what was your strategy to try to win at the game? Well, usually if you call the same club that you just had, it goes around and, and you usually won't get called again. That's so a great that's strategy. Mm -hmm. any, any other tips you can give our viewers? You know, uh, if you drink only every other second, you don't actually drink as much. Well, I must say that our players tonight are really putting on the Ritz in true Al Capone style. It seems the key strategy to winning at Suits is to stay focused and keep your wits about you at all times, if you want to be the big cheese. I'm Sharon Solara saying have fun and drink smart. Here are the rules to Body Shots Trivia. Hot Bikini Girls ask ready and willing contestants questions about the alcohol theme of the week. And if you can hold it together long enough to answer, you can win one of our sponsor's prizes. Here's the secret, everyone's a winner. Today's Body Shots questions are all about prohibition. Are you two ready to play? <laughs> yes. Your first Body Shots question is, which constitutional amendment established prohibition in the United States? All right, let's see your answers. The 18th Amendment, that's correct. All right, your second Body Shots question is, in what year did Prohibition begin? 1918, 1919, or 1920? All right, boys, let's check your answers. 1920, you're both correct. Your final body shots question is, during prohibition, if you were to make, transport, or sell illegal alcohol, what would that be called? All right, boys, let's see your answers. Bootlegging? Bootlegging, that is correct. The term originated from concealing hip flask of alcohol in the legging of boots. Well, it looks like everyone here was a winner. You both will receive a Shot Pack cocktail from Shot Pack Inc. 
Don't have room for the bottle and you just gotta have that shot? Need a little pick-me-up that hits all the right spots? Just tear it open and tilt your head back. It's the new Buzz from Shock Pack. and thanks for joining us here on Body Shots. I'm Chelsea Prindes, and we'll see you next time for another round of drinks. Ooh, ooh, baby, I like this. Ooh, I've been waiting so long to lay on my sandy beach blanket singing out a sweet summer song. Girls, loving, I've been drinking.